guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber, and in this video, we have a really huge non WCA unboxing from the cubicle.us. Now, it's been a while since I've done a really big unboxing on my channel of quite a few puzzles, and these are pretty much all non-WCA puzzles except for maybe one, I think. Now, some of you guys may know I've been getting a lot more into collecting recently, so I'm trying to kind of fill the gaps in my collection uh, where I'm missing some puzzles that I never bought. So, uh, I decided to order them all today, or at least a lot of them. So, let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at what's inside. This is probably going to be a very long video because uh, I kind of want to talk about each puzzle uh, for a bit, so uh, let's just see what we got. Alright, uh, first thing we see here, this is the AYI Fully Functional 4x4x3. Here we have a, I think, QJ or Cube Twist uh, 1x3x3. Uh, here we have a corner piece, this is for a Huan Ying. Uh, because one of the corners broke on my Huan Ying. This is a cube for you 3x3x7. Three three um, back here, this is a YJ Sulong. Um, I traded my Sulong at a competition and I never got another one. Um, so yeah, this is just for completing my 3x3 three three collection. Here is a void cube. Here we have a mix-up cube. Um, this is, I think, Oh man, I forgot. Uh, I can't really tell. Honestly, I don't remember exactly everything that I ordered, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what that is. Um, we've got some stickers, uh, Shangxiao 7x7 stickers, and that's because we have a Shangxiao 7x7 in here. We've got some Gigaminx stickers. That's right. I did order a Shangxiao Gigaminx. We've also got a cross cube, a Calvin's Puzzle cross cube. I'm really excited for this one as well. Let's see what else. We got a ton of stickers. So the reason I got all these stickers is because uh, I decided to re-sticker a lot of my big cubes to kind of make them consistent and have them all have the same stickers. So I got stickers for the 7x7, 8x8, 9x9, and 10x10. And when they come out with Shengxiao 11x11 stickers, I will be re-stickering that despite what I said in my unboxing. I decided to re-sticker it so that it would look the same as all my other puzzles. Um, we got this thing. I don't know what this is. It has a B on it, so we'll find out what that is. We've also got a mini 4x4. I used to have one of these a long time ago, but uh, then I lost it. Um, so I got another one. This is also just for collection because these cubes are terrible. Um, but I just wanted a mini 4x4 uh, for my collection. So Here we have a MF8 2x3x4. Another one that I used to have, um, but then I sold it to somebody and I didn't get another one. This is the last cube. Oh yeah, we've got a gear Master Morphix. I have quite a few gear puzzles, but I wanted to get some more and kind of complete the collection. There's still some that I don't have, but I did get a couple in this unboxing, uh, so this is one of them. And that's everything in the box, except we've got a business card in here and then the receipt. So let's go ahead and go through all these puzzles one by one. So we're going to start with this Landland Gear Master Morphix. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. It's actually a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting it to be closer to the size of the 3x3 Master Morphix, but it's actually quite a bit bigger. Now the first thing I'm noticing is that most of these corner stickers are not placed very well, so I might have to uh, kind of glue those down or something like that, because they are definitely coming up quite a bit, or uh, maybe even use a hair dryer uh, to kind of heat them up so that they can stick to this curved surface. But anyway, Here's what it looks like. This looks pretty cool, so let's go ahead and do some turns. So, this is just a gear cube modification. It doesn't turn all that well, but yeah, this is just uh, a normal gear cube basically that's been modded into this shape. Now, if you guys know, the gear cube is originally an Oscar Van Deventer puzzle. I'm not sure who originally created this one, um, but it should be, uh, it should solve exactly like a gear cube, so I'm pretty excited for that. It, you know, it turns okay, but, you know, nothing uh, more than what I was really expecting, I guess. Gear cubes don't have the best turning of puzzles in the world, obviously, um, but they are very fun to play with and very fun to solve, so. There is the Gear Master Morphix. Now, let's go ahead and move on to this mystery box. I'm not entirely sure what's in here. Um, I think I have an idea of what it is. Yes, I was right. 
This is another gear puzzle. This is the Mefferts Gear Barrel. So this is another just regular 3x3 gear cube um, modification into a barrel. And I love barrels. So let's go ahead and open this up. Um, now this actually has tiles instead of stickers. So there isn't going to be any problem with the stickers uh, fitting onto the curved face. But wow, doesn't this look nice? So the color scheme is obviously very weird. There's a red and orange next to each other. Blue and green are opposite and there's no white. But it looks pretty nice. The tiles feel nice and it feels like it just wants to move. So yeah, um, here's how it moves. The turning kind of reminds me of the gear uh, ball, which is very good, especially along this side. It's very smooth. This one actually is very smooth, um, despite the other one. Uh, but the other one was kind of like a knockoff puzzle, and this one is like a legit Mefferts puzzle, because the gear cube was originally a Mefferts puzzle. And so, yeah, here's the gear barrel. This is going to be another fun one to solve. Gear cubes are pretty easy, so um, this should solve exactly like a normal gear cube. So yeah, this one uh, I'm pretty happy with. I really like it. All right, moving on. This is a cube for you, 3x3x7. I'm going to open it from the bottom. Now, if you guys remember my half proportional 3x3x7 that I made a long time ago, um, that was made out of my 3x3x7 that I had at the time. And then I sold that and I didn't get another 3x3x7 just for my collection. The first thing I'm noticing in that is that the stickers are pretty horribly placed, but it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, this is the Cubic 3x3x7 made by cube for you uh, There was a kind of like a gap in my collection. Um, I have the 3x3x6 and then went straight to the 3x3x9, so I needed this one. Now, there is word that Wit Eden is actually making a fully proportional 3x3x7, and if that ever comes out, I'm definitely going to get it because I love proportional cuboids, and I was thinking about modding this into a proportional one, but that'd be a lot of work and would involve some casting, which I've never done before. But uh, right now I'm happy with this cube, and so uh, just doing some turning. It's definitely way too tight. Uh, these cubes are usually very smooth, but this thing is extremely tight right now and very slow. Uh, but just loosening that up a bit, loosening all the screws, will fix the problem. But yeah, this is a very fun cuboid. It's basically just a 3x3 mechanism, and then these layers here were just split up into three layers. The 3x3x7 is, is always a fun puzzle, and, and I, I, I enjoy it. So yeah, there's the cube for you 3x3x7. Up next, we've got this uh, 1x3x3. So again, this was a gap in my 3x3x7 cuboid collection. I don't have a floppy cube, as they're normally called, because the original version of this puzzle um, just had normal square stickers and when you turned an edge like this, the center would actually raise up a little bit and bend because it was kind of a floppy center um, that would allow this to work. But now they've come up with a new mechanism that has these little inner pieces that allow it to function uh, with this kind of curved center design. But I think this looks rather nice actually. And this one also does shape shift, but it doesn't have those inner circle stickers or on the outside that I really don't like. So I got this version that has more square stickers and I may even just replace these with uh, normal square stickers because they will fit. Feels actually pretty stable. It doesn't feel like these are gonna uh, pop out even though they are a little bit loose. That's nice. That's the one by three by three, the floppy cube. Up next, we've got the Wit Eden Mini 4x4. Made a video about this a long time ago. It was one of my earlier reviews, and uh, this cube is definitely really bad. It is um, extremely unstable, it pops a bunch, and the turning is terrible. But anyway, um, I think I lost that cube because just ran one day randomly I couldn't find it. But, you know, the turning's actually kind of okay, even though it does lock a bunch. It's pretty smooth, and uh, it is like finger trickable, but then you get stuff like this happening, and uh, even stuff like, if I can get it to happen, where you'll turn one layer and it'll turn the opposite layer. I gotta see if I can get that to occur. It doesn't want to do that, but as you can see, we already have a pop um, on the centerpiece, but actually that popped right back in. Uh, this is just a novelty item, not really for solving, but just for collection, because uh, it'll look nice next to the rest of my mini 3x3s. So that's the Wit Eden Mini 4x4. Up next, uh, let's take a look at this mystery cube. Uh, now I'm remembering more of what I ordered, and now I'm almost positive that this is the MF8 uh, 3x4x5. This is another cuboid that I had at one point, but then traded for at Nationals. So here we go. This is the 3x4x5. And I remember having a lot of fun with this puzzle. This cube is really fun to solve. Might make a video about it actually, um, because it is a fun one. 
And so it is, of course, fully functional, turns across all layers, and it does shape shift along one, or actually along two axes. So this axis and this axis can shape shift, um, as you can see. But uh, if you decide, if you wanted to turn this axis into this axis, it doesn't turn. So yeah, that's how that works. Now, uh, the mechanism of this is not that great. It doesn't follow the original Tom Z mechanism closely. What that means is uh, you can kind of get pieces that are very loose and can come out easily. I'm trying to get that to happen. Uh, it could be that they fixed the design, but oh, nope. Yep, see these little um, edges come out very, very easily. Yeah, that's a three by four by five. I'll be stickering that up at a later date. So since I got the 3x4x5, I also had to get its little brother, the 2x3x4. So when these first came out, there was actually a problem with the mechanism, um, and there was internal bandaging that was going on uh, after you had shapeshifted it. Uh, now MFA claimed that this was part of the design, however, it obviously wasn't, and that was just them trying to cover it up, basically, um, so they didn't have to deal with the problem, but eventually they addressed it, and now the mechanism has been fixed. So before you had to buy these little internal pieces and replace the internal parts in the mechanism uh, with these replacement parts so that it would function properly, but now you don't have to. So this is the 2x3x4. This one does come stickered, uh, luckily, and it turns pretty okay. It's going to need a little bit of lube, but it, uh, it turns pretty well. And I did used to have one of these as well a while ago, and it was pretty fun to solve. So this one as well shapeshifts, just like the uh, 3x4x5, and it's a fun little cuboid. So I think these are called bricks. These are the bricks, the 2x3x4. Pretty fun. All right, moving on, we've got the AYI 4x4x3. Now, I have the 5x5x4 and the 4x4x5 from AYI, but I never got their 4x4x3. Now, I remember a long time ago when these puzzles were solely handmade, and it was very, very complicated to build one. I remember looking at some videos about it and thinking, man, I would love to build that, but I don't think it would be possible. That's just too hard of a mod. But now it's mass produced, and so here we go. Uh, first turns, it feels actually pretty similar to the other AYI puzzles. Um, it's pretty, it's actually very smooth. It's more rounded off, the corners are more rounded off than the AYI puzzles. Uh, the other ones which are very sharp and can actually kind of hurt your fingers after a while of using them. But um, this one is very smooth and doesn't feel as bad. Now this one does not shapeshift because it is uh, even turning into an odd, which means it will not shapeshift. But yeah, it's still a fun cuboid. I think this is classified as a floppy cuboid or something else. I'm not sure. Super Antonio Vivaldi has a whole video um, or a whole video series classifying all different types of cuboids into different sections. So there's like floppies, bricks, towers. But yeah, this puzzle is, um, I'm sure it'll be very fun. I'm, I know pretty much exactly how to solve it. So um, yeah, that's going to be a fun one. This is also going to kind of fill the gap in my 4x4xN collection. So I have the 4x4x2 and the 4x4x4, 4x4x5, and 4x4x6, but no 4x4x3. So there we go, there's the AYI 4x4x3. Up next, we have the Land Land Void Cube. Uh, this is another one that I used to have, but then sold. So here we go. Now, this actually has a normal color scheme, which I wasn't expecting. Normally, Land Land Void Cubes have these very strange color schemes, and it's very weird, but this one actually does have a normal color scheme, which I'm very happy about, otherwise I would have had to re-sticker it. This one, as well, is pretty okay as far as turning. It doesn't really turn any better than the Rubik's Void Cube, which is pretty much the exact same mechanism. I also have that, but I like the look of this much better. Um, I'm going to be getting another Rubik's Void Cube to make the chain link mod that Red KB showed, and uh, but this is just going to be for collection. It looks very nice, honestly. I really like the appearance of it, and uh, yeah, that's the Land Land Void Cube. This one also solves uh, just like a 3x3, except there's a parity at the end where you can get to a two edge swap like you would on a 4x4, and it may seem impossible, but it's really just because uh, there's no centers. It can create a parity where... Uh, all these centers could have rotated 90 degrees. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but it's pretty easy to solve, actually. Yeah, obviously this cube has no corner cutting because there's no springs. Uh, the mechanism just doesn't allow for it. But yeah, the Land Land Void Cube is a very fun puzzle, and I'm excited to solve it. Up next, we have a puzzle that I've never had before. This is the Wit Eden Mix-Up Cube. I'm very excited for this one. Now, 
This one as well has a very strange color scheme. Look at that. In the videos I've seen about it, it just has a normal color scheme. But this one's very weird. If you guys don't know, the mix-up cube was created by Oscar Van Daventer. Functions just like a normal 3x3. Well, that actually turns pretty well. Um, but there's another hidden move, and the reason why it's called the mix-up cube is because you can turn it 45 degrees like this, the middle layer, and then these layers will turn. Now I'm noticing a little bit of kind of the mini 4x4 type thing where, yeah, this layer will make the other layer turn. That's not great, but it's also not too bad, it's just there's a little bit of resistance on this side when I turn this side. But yeah, the mix-up cube, uh, you know, it can be, it can create some pretty weird looking shapes, and I've heard that it's actually kind of hard to solve, so I'm excited to uh, mix this one up. Hopefully I can find some replacement stickers, because I do not like the color scheme on this cube at all, but there's the mix-up cube, pretty interesting puzzle, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, play with. So, yeah. Now I also did get a YJ Sulong in this box, however I've made videos about this puzzle before so I'm not going to talk about it. Um, next we have the Calvin's Puzzle Cross Cube. Um, now this is really the only one that I'm interested in from that whole set. I already have the 3x3x5 and I uh, probably will get an X cube as well just because I have the X cube barrel now and I want to have the original version of the puzzle for my collection. Um, but this, I actually built one of these, and it was kind of funny, I finished building um, my own cross cube the very day that this puzzle was announced, and that was actually uh, <laughs> very upsetting for me because I just finished this big mod that was uh, usually not something that many people had, and then that same day it was announced on HK Now Store, and at that point I kind of just gave up, I didn't make a video about it or anything. I was just like, whatever, one day I'll just get the regular uh, mass-produced cross cube and, and that'll be that. But anyway, this is basically a 3x3x5 uh, where the 3x3 is the center and then it's extended by two layers on every side. So uh, all of these layers can turn, obviously, and uh, it's pretty cool. I I did solve my original cross cube a couple of times, so I know uh, how it works and how it solves. It's basically like a 5x5, five five. so basically you just solve all of these pieces like 5x5 five five centers, and it's it's pretty simple actually. Now one thing I'm noticing is that the edges are very uh, jaggedy, and that's just from the flash of the pieces, kind of like new die-in cubes, so I'm probably going to have to shave that down uh, because it is very sharp. But yeah, the turning of this puzzle is actually quite good. These outer layers turn very well, and the inner layers don't turn as well, but they're still very nice. I'm going to go ahead and do a like a full checkerboard. Um, okay, there we go. So yeah, the cross cube is very fun, and I really like the way it looks too. It looks very nice. And this was actually also originally built by Tony Fisher. Um, a long time ago, <laughs> I guess. Uh, probably, I think it was back in 2009 or something that he built it. But yeah, it's a pretty cool puzzle. Up next, we have the Sheng Shao 7x7. This is another one that I used to have. I did used to have a regular Sheng Shao 7x7, but then I modded it into the 7x7 barrel. And I got a mini Sheng Shao 7x7 for my collection, but never a regular one. So I prefer the regular size, actually, at least uh, uh, as far as how it looks in the collection. That is very, very oily. Um, but uh, anyway, the turning is great. Shang Shao 7x7s have great turning. And yeah, this is a very, uh, a very nice puzzle. It is a little bit big for speed solving, and that's why they did make the mini. But for display, the uh, regular size Shang Shao 7x7 looks far better, in my opinion. This one's also better for modding, making puzzles like the 5x7x7 or the 7x7 barrel. There's less olzing in the lines when you cut into it, as you would find on a mini Shang Shao, uh, which makes this one a better choice. Also, just since the pieces are bigger, uh, it's it's better. So yeah, that is the Shang Shao 7x7. Very great turning, very great puzzle, and um, yeah, so that's gonna look real nice in my collection. So right now, there's only one cube left that I haven't talked about, and I save the best for last, and that is the Gigaminx. The Gigaminx is a puzzle that I've wanted for years, that I and I never got. Um, but the Sheng Shao Gigaminx was just recently announced, and is the cheapest Gigaminx now on the market. So I decided to get it. I think this was only thirty or forty dollars, uh, which is a very good price. And um, I definitely also looks like the best Gigaminx of the three by far, uh, which of course is the Cube for You MFA, and now this one. 
Um, so this has the same color scheme as the Shangsha Mega Minx. I think it really looks nice. It's going to look nice next to it, and um, it's also very, very greasy, uh, even more so than the other ones. This is like a very thick layer of grease, but that's all right. I'm going to wipe that down uh, just a little bit later. But um, yeah, the Giga Minx, honestly, I think really, really looks nice. It's uh, it's a really, really good looking puzzle, and I'm also going to be getting the Terra Minx and the Peta Minx uh, sometime soon to complete the Minx series. But anyway, let's go ahead and do some turning. The turning, oh wow, that's actually really nice. Um, it's finger trickable, definitely. Feels a lot like a Shangsha Mega Minx, just with like more pieces, kinda. It's very, very smooth and uh, very fast as well. Uh, the inner layers are a little slower, but um, they actually turn fine as well. Uh, I've never watched a tutorial on how to solve big Minx puzzles, but I pretty much know how it works. I know that you kind of solve these centers, and then uh, even though they're like a different shape, and then you solve these edges, although there's a lot more of them, and then you solve it like a Mega Minx, um, basically. And so I kind of understand how that works, but I'm not sure if I know exactly how to do it. Um, but, but yeah, this is going to be very fun to try and figure out how to solve. I don't think I'm going to need a tutorial, uh, because it should be pretty intuitive. I do have a, a, a pretty good knowledge of how big cubes work and how Mega Minx works. So yeah, this should be good, but this is a great puzzle. I really, really like it. And I'm so happy to finally have a Giga Minx. This is a puzzle that I've wanted for such a long time, uh, but I just never bought. And so now I have it and it's amazing. I love it. So yeah, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in all the puzzles that I got in this massive unboxing. So here we go. These are all the puzzles that I got. Uh, I'm super happy to have these puzzles in my collection now, and I'm really happy to have done a big unboxing like this. It was really fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought, and if you want me to do more of these, because I definitely will be getting more non-WCA puzzles when they come out, and just ones that have come out in, in the past. Uh, so let me know if you guys want me to do more of these unboxings, because I had a lot of fun making it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, bye.